Here's a question I'm asked a lot. What's the easiest way to convert from classic to fluid? That's a great question. And the stock answer? It depends. No, seriously. If I'm converting a plain classic page to a, say, a plain fluid page, then I would take one approach. If I'm going to embed the content in a two panel layout, then I'm gonna use a totally different approach. But here, let me ask you a question. Why convert to fluid? I mean, Fluid is Oracle strategic direction. Anything we create from here on out probably should be in Fluid. And the business process based wrapper around most of our content is likely Fluid. So converting to Fluid is a reasonable goal, but Fluid is about responsive and adaptive design. Are you expecting mobile usage with that component? If so, then hey, Fluid is perfect. If not, hmm, then maybe Classic Plus is the right solution. Anyway, let me show you a quick Fluid conversion. Here, I have a component, it's, it's wrapped in the, I, I put it in the student self-service in this case. Uh, employee self-service really doesn't matter, right? The use case, it's all the same. Uh, but anyways, you can see here, we've got fluid, we've got fluid, it's all fluid, until you get to my component, the one that I created. This is one that I say, perhaps I've been using for several years, used it in classic, and now that my system is migrated to Fluid, I should probably think about doing something with this component. Now, since it is self-service, I think I do want Fluid. Self-service is something that we're likely to use on a small form factor mobile device, so it makes a lot of sense to convert it to Fluid. And I just want to show you what's a quick way, what would be a simple way. Now, this is a plain classic page that I will convert to a plain Fluid component. Now, I know it is using that left-hand side panel. I did talk about the two-panel layout, and if I was embedding this in a two-panel layout, I would do something totally different, but hey, this is not a two-panel layout. It is, in fact, a navigation collection or in this case, being Campus Solutions, it's a master detail that's reading from a navigation collection to supply the content. So my content only needs to think about the plain old basic content there on the in the main transaction area. So that's where I'm going to focus. So in App Designer, I'm going to open this page. Here, let's get the page name. It happens to be JSM Uniforms. Okay, that makes sense. It's the page that we use for uniforms. You know, this might be uh, perhaps in a private school where you are managing uniforms. Hey, what about a sports team? Might have uniforms there issued. Uh, in, a, in a work environment, you might have uniforms that you're issuing to your employees as well. So let's open the page, JSM Uniforms. And here's my page. It looks classic, like every other ordinary classic page. Uh, let's see, what was the name of the component? It is, oh, my uniforms. That makes sense. Okay, let's open it as well. The first step to converting from classic to fluid is to open that component and flip the switch. So at the component level, I'm going to flip the switch here. I'm going to mark it as a fluid mode component. See, interesting thing about fluid versus classic the page does not determine how the content renders. The component determines how the content renders. So flipping that switch is automatically going to cause the content to render in fluid. That's cool, right? Let's see. Let's see what happens here. I'm going to just reload the whole navigation collection, everything, and let's go into my uniforms. Awesome. Hey, it's rendering in fluid. Now, arguably, it's not rendering near as well in fluid as it did in classic before. Uh, for example, let me point out some of the differences. Well, first one is the content is all rendered vertically now, whereas before it was rendered nicely into three horizontal, horizontally aligned sections. Eh, now it's all vertical. Why is that? Well, data entry fields in Fluid are considered block elements. And so every block element or every data entry field is taking the entire width of its content, leaving or sorry, the entire width of its parent, leaving no room for others on the same line. So if you and I want to change that, well, we need to shrink the parent. And stick with me, I'll show you how to do that. Uh, but there's another issue here. Notice there's no padding along the side here. And in fact, if I were to shrink this down, you would notice that there are no scroll bars either. That's because we're missing a very important piece of all fluid pages. So I'm gonna, yeah, I did say pages there, fluid pages. So a page that is designed to be used with fluid Two things we should do, uh, or I should say a classic page here, converting to Fluid. Either way, uh, two things that we need to do. Number one, let's open the page properties. And on the page properties, we want to make sure that we mark the Fluid page checkbox. 
Uh, now the fluid page checkbox, again, that has nothing to do with how the content renders. It is a safety switch. It ensures that we're not setting fluid attributes on a page designed to be used for classic. Personally, I don't know if I see a lot of value in that safety switch, but hey, what's wrong with a safety switch, right? Uh, what it's gonna do is disable, if, without that checked, the fluid tab is disabled on all of the fields, uh, items that are on my page. I want it enabled, that's why I checked the box here, fluid page. Okay, great. Next step, let's make a little bit more room on our page. One thing we know about fluid, it contains a lot of group boxes. So let's give ourselves some room for some of those group boxes that we're going to be using here on this page. Next thing I want to do is I want to imagine that add a group box. Every fluid page starts with an outer group box. This outer group box provides context for style classes, etc. Uh, the label, I'm going to clear the label because this is going to be an invisible group box. It's used for layout only. And the outer group box for most PeopleSoft pages starts with PS apps content. The group box type is set to layout only, style class, style class spelling is important. It's going to be layout only, meaning it's invisible. And I'm going to go ahead and save that. Let's, and let's just incrementally, iteratively see what our changes do. So I'm going to go ahead and click on my uniforms. Oh, awesome. I have a scroll bar now and I have some padding around the items. Hey, it's actually starting to look pretty good right now. You know, I feel good enough with this that I could actually go live with this right here. What did that take? That was like two minutes, right? two check boxes and a group box with a style class. And you have essentially converted from classic to fluid. Now we could do better, so stick with me. There's a few more things that we could do here. Like for example, we could fix that layout, the three column layout, so that we're seeing the same thing across the top. Stay with me, it's only gonna take care another minute and we'll be, we'll be done. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna apply a group box around the content here. Because what I wanna do is I want to now add a three column layout. And now the, the style class I'm going to use here, they're documented in many places, but the two most common places or the places you should probably look for the style class I'm about to use is the fluid UI CSS guide. Uh, you can find that in my Oracle support. And the other place where you'll find this is in the converting classic components to fluid. There is an appendix, I believe it's appendix four. It's at the end of the document. It's a 25 page document in total, but uh, appendix four is a page and a half of style classes versus the fluid CSS style guide that Oracle provides in my Oracle support. It's about 107 pages. <laughs> Which one do you want to sift through? Yeah, exactly. Uh, okay, so here in this group box, I'm going to go to the label and I'm going to apply this out that I'm just going to give this a label PSC column dash three because that's what we're using as a three column layout. I'm going to use the label there for documentation purposes. That is our best practice. And I'm going to go to each one of these internal items and I'm going to apply a style class to each one. It's PSC underscore column item dash one of three. Meaning that this is participating in a three column layout and it's consuming one column of the three column layout or said another way, 33% or should we say 33 and a third? Uh, ooh, question, group box type of layout only? I mean, that's what we oftentimes do when we use style classes. No, actually, I want, this style, I want this group box to be visible. So I'm gonna go ahead and keep that as the default. And let's see, view page field properties, style class PSC column item one of three, and the final item here, PSC column item one of three. Perfect, hey, let's go ahead and reload this thing and see what it looks like onto my uniforms. I like that. That looks good. We can resize the content and at a certain point, you notice that it breaks over. Now, I was looking at this here and I was noticing, hey, some of that content is actually overlaying itself. Uh, so, hey, maybe the three column layout wasn't exactly appropriate here, given the size of these fields, or maybe Maybe we should apply some CSS to shrink the, these fields down to a more appropriate size. But hey, you know what? I'm going to leave that for another episode. Now, the content that we covered here in this episode is a subset of content that we normally cover in our Fluid classes. Take a look at our website, see what's coming up next, see what sort of classes we're offering, see when we're next offering Fluid so you can get more of this content. Or, hey, here's another idea. Subscribe to our LinkedIn, Facebook, and Twitter feeds to receive updates every time we post a course. Or, even better, give us a call and let us help you develop a people tools training strategy. Now, if you enjoyed this episode, be sure to like, share, comment, and subscribe for more content. And we look forward to seeing you 
in the next episode.